But at the same time, we can't just push it over to the state and expect them to do something in, in you know, a, in a They would have already done something if it was that big of an epidemic, I guess. I would, I would say there are 23 municipalities in the state of Missouri, several, lots of them that are a lot bigger than us and lots of them that are a lot smaller than us that have figured out a way to do this. And I'd hate to see it say that Missouri is, or not Missouri, the Cape is punting it because we can't figure it out or it's not the public health. I didn't think of that. I never, I mean, in, in, in 100% transparency, it was never with me like us figuring it out. We really wanted to figure it out. I just don't think it's something that we should figure out. I really have this, I'm sorry, but my age, I'm thinking we've got people, I know the argument of you, you, people, not people like you, sorry. <laughs> there is this argument out there that are like, well, let's not, people, um, the 18 year olds that fight in war and da 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 da. Well, I, I really look at that as a, as a thing. Like, they can vote. They can fight. They can, we can hire them to work for us. We can, they, they're adults. They're adults, and they are, we literally <coughs> let them make their own decisions. We are imposing some laws and regulations on them that I don't feel, uh, that's over-governance on an adult. So that adult who's still in high school, who purchases the product across the street from the school and brings it in and gives it to a 16-year-old shouldn't be, we, sh we shouldn't even try. Then, then make the ordinance that if you're in high school, you can't buy it. Well then, I mean, if... Well, that's what you're saying. I mean, because we're not talking about the 19-year-olds, the 20-year-olds, and... An adult will still be able to buy it. Anybody over the age of 21 can walk in anyway. <coughs> But an adult legally is 18 years old, so then sure. just change the ordinance to if you're in high school, you can't buy tobacco. But somebody can legally be in high school until the age of 21, right? Well, you're talking about high school and that, so... Is there anybody in the education system that could be at least legally be in high school until the age of 21? I think that's actually what it is. I don't think it can be until the age of Yeah. Maybe we should put this back on the agenda or something. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just... <laughs> Up the age for the everything fact, for the 21. Fact that I'd like to see some stats in the cities that have passed it if the actual if the actual usage has gone down that much. Yeah. Because it's a I think it's, I think it's just it's a feel good ordinance. It, it really is. That really makes you, you know, you're doing the right thing. But 90% of those kids, if they want it, they can get it online. You can buy the product. You can buy any baby yeah. product online. No restrictions or aid whatsoever. And quite frankly, all they're going to do at that point, I mean, there's... Mr. Mayor, I might, I might point out that in the proposal that was given to the council, uh, people of those younger ages would be able to purchase it. There was no prohibition on that. The prohibition was on people selling to them. True. And there was talk of having, uh, requiring the seller of vaping products to pay a, like an occupation license tax in order to pay for uh, Enforce. enforcement. Yeah. Uh, that's a violation of Hancock. Yes. Oh, that was in the... Yeah. Okay. Tax. Unless it was tax approval of voters in Cape Girardeau, it would be a violation of Hancock. So there are lots of little little things in that, in that, in the sample ordinances that just didn't make sense. And, uh, you know, I'm all for living it. And I, and, I, and I understand that. I understand the problem. But the problem is not so much who's buying it as who's selling it and the percent of nicotine in it. Your jewel products have a great, real high concentration of nicotine. And as, as a city, doing this is not going to stop that. It's not going to stop them from selling that stuff online. It's the, it's the nicotine that gets them addicted. Well, but shouldn't we do anything that we can do in order to... I think we need to, we need to see if maybe there are better educational things out there to help with this and try that route rather than trying to pass an ordinance that's going to be ineffective. But over the years, there have been numerous non-smoking educational things. Uh, non-smoking educational things? Are tended to get people to vape instead of smoke because long term wise that's the issue it is it is healthier to vape than it is smoke supposedly now you uh, yeah a lot of the people that you're it's having around the country that are having respiratory <laughs> issues and, and whatnot 
So we're seeing this mass migration from smoking into vaping, and vaping is starting to seep into our schools. So I just feel like there should be, we, we should stem the tide. I'd be anxious to see what like the K public schools actually I think about. I this. think a, a massive educational effort on the heart, on behalf of not just K public schools, but your Catholic schools, your Christian schools, everybody, on what the harm of the nicotine is and what it does is going to be a lot more effective than a local ordinance that's going to be hard to enforce. I think, you know, since, since none of, not all schools are under the same umbrella, no. I think that by the city, which is, you know, which by most proximity contains those schools, us passing this type of uh, ordinance would point in the direction of exactly that. And we can put this on. We can, you know, put this on another agenda if we want to continue the conversation. But uh, I just think, you know, if we, if that's the goal, is to put it out there that this is, you know, this is not a good thing that people should not be, you know, people underage should not be doing it. Then the city is the one unifying body that supersedes the district and you know the Catholic schools and the Lutheran schools and everything else. Yeah, I just don't know how much I, my, I, I, I don't question think, I don't the validity. Think on really how much of an infiltration we've got with 18 and 19 year olds that are seniors in high school selling vape pens. I'm more, I mean, I'm more worried about drugs and guns than I am vapes. I mean, and another ordinance that we can't really police is ineffective. I mean, it's just... I don't know, one could argue the effect of this over an ordinance that would make it illegal versus the effectiveness of education that is, that is essentially punting that education and the cost of the development of the yeah. education programs to the school system, Being to the city, to the is, is health the organizations, whatever. You can argue whether that's like <laughs> make Yeah, we can have that argument all day long. You can solve yeah, I mean, yeah. presumption. Either one, either one. But at, about, at the end of the day, with the passing of the ordinance, it makes it illegal for that younger adult um, generation. I said, I think we you'd have to make a strong case that it would make it um, easier for them to access that tobacco. I mean, at the end of the day, it would make it harder for them to access that tobacco. You can pass an ordinance. So it's a step in the right direction from the public health standpoint. You can pass an ordinance that says it's illegal for anybody to sell it to anybody under 21. But is that going to be effective in stopping the high rate, the high percentage of nicotine? Is that going to be effective in stopping people from buying it online? No. No, but you can't legislate those things no. on a local level. No, but we can control local. So here, here, here's, here's my comment. It sounds like, from where Scott's coming from, he's wanting guidance for city staff on what to do next. Just from my perspective, what I would like to see happen next, I'd like to see some numbers from some of these, these cities that have, have put the ordinance in place. Do they have any statistics? on how effective the ordinance has been. Um, you know, I know you, you've talked to some of the uh, other chiefs. Um, you know, what, what are they seeing as their rate of uh, complaint or, or whatever in some of those areas? So what I've heard so far is they've seen um, absolutely no change at all. They're, I mean, they're, they're, most of them are going to complaint-based enforcement, which is what we do now for the, for the underage. And typically, you don't see a whole lot of tobacco-related selling complaints. Um, and, and on the enforcement end, what makes it really difficult to enforce is it's not like we as police officers can go in and buy some cigarettes and then go, hey, we busted you. Well, we've got to go out and locate a juvenile um, that has to be vetted um, before we can put them in the service, which is what we do with our alcohol. But uh, the, the juveniles that we get uh, to do alcohol are provided by the state. Come from other areas into the community to purchase alcohol for us. Um, so we would have to, we'd have to do that for the to do tobacco compliance. Uh, since the discussion that we had, what was that a month ago? We had that, this discussion. There have been uh, numerous articles that I've read, mostly in our local paper, their local stories and national stories, um, just about the epidemic, mostly kind of from a health standpoint. It seems like the FDA is waking up to this problem, and it uh, sounds like there's a lot that's going to be looked into. Um, even, I think, one thing I read is that you know, they're considering uh, banning all flavors, even, which would probably, and, and, and making the 
the, the cigarette smoke prominent, the, the taste prominent in, in even the baby thing, so that it is perhaps more of a smoking cessation product rather than something that kids <coughs> would pick up, you know, from scratch and enjoy. Um, so it just seems to me like there's a lot in flux. Um, I'm probably sitting on the side of waiting a little bit to see where some things land. Uh, I, mean, I, won't assume, I won't presume to know what the legislature is going to do, but I don't think this is an issue they're going to take up anytime soon, yeah. just from my perspective. Yeah. Um, so if it's going to happen, happen, it would have to happen at the local I think you're more likely to see the FDA do something about it. They, to, they may do some things on the nicotine levels in your vaping products, your jewel, your stuff like that, but raising the age, it's not something anyone wants to wait into. You know, on that level. Mm -hmm. Does that answer your question, buddy? <laughs> 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 we will clear as mud. Uh, how about we. Uh, Find out if other cities and what, what's happened. Uh, I, I think it'd be great to see some statistics. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, they've seen a decrease in, you know, and uh, share that with you. And then, then see uh, how you feel about stuff before. And, and we can we can develop we can develop ordinance. I'm not saying we can't develop ordinance. I'm just saying there's a lot of issues. That's going to take some some time to develop. In other words, sure. time to develop uh, how we would uh, enforce. And so. We just, if, if it was going to be a huge consensus, I think let's wait, then we didn't want to do a lot of work and then wait. So we'll, we can find out uh, from uh, uh, other cities what, uh, what's been the effectiveness of their work. Okay. So you're going to go directly to the cities. Yeah. So looking for nonpartisan. Right. Uh, yeah. Cool. Yeah, we'll get from the department uh, circuit. Sure. No school resource officer. Yeah. School resource officer. All right. Good discussion. Anybody Thank else? You. Is there anybody here this evening to appear before the council for an item not listed on the agenda? Yes, ma'am. My new person is Nate Thomas. I'm Sue Cork. I don't know if you remember me or not. I met y'all. Uh, I was in the first. Class of persons. I have an ongoing issue. I've sent numerous emails. I've made numerous phone calls to the police station. I have a house right next door to me that a tree fell on in that really big storm back in the spring and took out half the garage. And for three months, the tree laid in the driveway, which is a shared driveway. And my brother, who lives with me, is disabled. And in order for us to get in and out of our, our own parking area at my house, I had to, out of my pocket, pay someone to remove it. And then the house continuously has rodents running in and out of it. The backyard has a couch that was burnt two years ago that I've complained to the city about numerous times. Um, a tree fell in the front yard while my brother was in the hospital and I had to get him home that night and the only way he can get in my house is through my back door. So the tune of $900, I had that mess cleaned up. Now the house is empty. The house belongs to a corporation according to the people I've been talking to at the city, but nobody wants to do anything to help me. Y'all are sitting here talking about regulating vaping. When I moved back to CAFE after being gone for 30 years, because I felt like CAFE was a place where I could be comfortable as a senior citizen, and I wouldn't have to worry about, is my neighbor bothering to pick up their own trash? Or is their yard being mowed? I've got vermin coming out of her yard into mine and I'm paying exterminators and killing snakes in my backyard. You, what's your address? 111 South Louisiana. And I have pictures if you all would like to see what I'm living next door to. 
I mean, it's not, I know I live in an old part of town. I chose an old part of town because I'm comfortable there. But to get a, get a car that was abandoned on the 4th day of July, finally got it moved after contacting the police four times, twice in person, and sending numerous emails, it finally got moved September the 3rd. Why? Shouldn't take that long. Oh, it's only supposed to take 48 hours. But nobody bothered to come out. Who owned the car? I don't know. It had no license on it. It was full of junk. Didn't even have bumpers on it. I have no clue who it belonged to. It just showed up on the 4th of July, and it took to the 3rd of September to get it moved. And, you know, I understand you're concerned about the children coming up. I understand that. Got it. But what about us senior citizens that are here that I expect the ordinances to be maintained for my protection and my property's protection? Our what new, am I doing our wrong? Our nuisance laws are designed to handle situations like this a lot quicker than what you've experienced huh. tonight. Well, I don't know why that, I don't know why that's happened, but it's something that will. Well, I was told we'll I was told by one of the city employees that I was picking on a senior citizen. I said, "Really?" She informed me I'm ten years older than her. So what does that make me? I I mow my yard. Is you talking about the person that lives next door? Now the house is empty. But there was somebody living. Yeah. There. Yeah. But I, I don't know what to do. I don't know where to go. So I just, I already warned Nate I was going to do this. He knew I was coming. But, uh, you know, I'm tired of it. I'm a citizen of this community. I maintain my property. And the only thing I'm asking is the city enforce the ordinances and make whoever owns that property maintain it. I don't disagree with I don't disagree at all. Yeah. So what do I do? Y'all are the city council. Yes, you I, tell I me what to do. That first thing in the morning. I, I, I'm not familiar with this property, so I don't have cool. an answer for what's transpired right now. I here. even walked into the police station twice about the car. Okay. I will look You'll have first thing in the morning. Ty, you look at it and just and mm -hmm. make nuisance in abatement. Sue, in, in the in Ward One, especially in the Red Star District, we deal with this all the time. It was a couple of months ago that we actually had a pretty solid conversation about some of the derelict properties. Um, after a recent issue in, in Ward One, I went and did sort of an inventory of some of the derelict properties that are around uh, and, and around in our, our, our area. We've got a lot of property that needs to be reviewed and, and overseen, and so I know that that's been something that we've all started conversations about about how to best take care of all these things because there's a lot of derelict homes there's a lot of things that yeah, just two of them on the agenda tonight i know i saw that yeah. so you know slowly my my whole point is it shouldn't have to get to the point of being a derelict problem if the ordinance that's in place that says you shall maintain your property is ever enforced it would make a big difference but it's not enforced until it becomes a major problem and they can tell you what it looks like next door to my house. That's lowering my property value. I work very hard to keep my property up. If something needs to be done, I get it fixed. I just had gravel put in my parking area because it was getting slushy. You know, I'm not, I'm not the kind of person that won't help. If there's trash in the street, my trash can, when I take my trash can down, it's about half full of what's in my street. Our street never gets, sees a street washer. Our street never sees anybody doing any maintenance. They finally replaced <coughs> the broken sidewalk after six years, only because they had to replace the water line that the tree root grew through. But my point is, Okay, I love it that y'all are beautifying downtown. Whoopee. I love it that, you know, we have nice sections of town. What about all of us that maintain our property in the old parts of town? We just need some help. You know. We, we've said, and I've said this before, <coughs> we've, had, we've had incidences like this before. My first, my first 
response to the public was take pictures. You want them? And get it to us so we know what it is. And we will deal with it. We have a continued <laughs> effort to... Oh, I've emailed them. Yeah. Well, you know, and this is what you see when you walk out of my side door. Not, not to make excuses, but when, when you have property owners that you don't know the address on, they're out of town, it is hard to find addresses and get them processed. Well, this is the property a management that it I, turns out on this. Right, right. But you have to notify the owner. You can't, you the company you know, is prestigious. You legally, you have to follow the steps. So it takes time sometimes. Sue, I would like to. <coughs> Well, one, I want to reiterate what everybody else said, that we have a concerted effort to help clear up the blighted properties in the neighborhoods. I will say, not even that it's because it's my ward, but it's also the same block that I live on. So I also have a committed effort to do that. And I apologize that I've just gotten to know you, but I look forward to working with you and your You know, I mean, my whole thing is, yes, I don't because, mind helping anybody. Yeah. But... That's, I think that's beyond ridiculous. I've put up with it now for over almost a year. Yeah. And I'm just at the point, if the property isn't going to be maintained, there's got to be something the city will, can do. I will tell you this. It is a long, long process to go through condemnation. The whole process, because of the legal system, requires you do this, requires you do this. Uh, if we attempt to contact the owner and the owner doesn't respond, then we're kind of stuck between the rock and the hard place, just like you may be. But well, there, there's a process. But there's a process. process. Yeah. There's a process. You have to give a certain You're worried there's not the process has the, the process has never been started. Sure, right. yeah. right. I've been complaining about it now for over a year. I, every time that, that the yard ever got mowed previously, either I wound up doing it, or I'd, call, I'd sent seven emails to Mr. Metzger, and finally somebody showed up and got the yard mode. I it was, was a, this has been since I bought property. my property, and I'm just, I'm Yeah, I, I, will, I commend you for bringing it forward to us. I commend, well, I was there. Yeah, I warned you. And her brother, her brother was driving out as I was speaking with her in the front, in the yard, and that rose bush that's on the in the shared driveway just scraped the end of his truck and made this horrible sound. So, I mean, it is an overgrown property. It needs to be addressed. I commend you for the efforts. One, not only bringing it to our attention, but as everybody should, but then our, that particular part of our of town, I mean, it's on the upper trajectory, and it's through these efforts that we continue on that. I mean, there's been, effort, I've noticed with the efforts with the nuisance, the chronic nuisance apartment complex, with the implementation of the security systems, that that um, has improved the, a lot. The, the we don't of, have blue lights every night. Exactly, it has helped tremendously. Right. It's helped with some of the um, uh, questionable folks walking mm -hmm. onto our property, and etc. So, um, it's in the upper trend, and it's only through efforts like this that will continue to go in that upper trend, and hope we can address it. Well, I'm just asking the council for some help in dealing with the people that are supposed to be enforcing <coughs> the ordinances. And don't tell me that I'm picking on a senior citizen. Sorry. <laughs> thank, no, you. Okay, thank you so thank much. You. Thank you Stay in touch with, that, with Nate. Yes. Oh, he lives at the end of my street. <laughs> <laughs> he can't get rid of me. I'm that I'm also, that make sure old he mows his yard too. Don't you know, worry. Y'all have heard the, the joke about the old man that yells, get off my property? <laughs> yeah, well, I'm the old woman in town that says, pick up your trash. I love that. I love that. That's great. We need a thousand more people like that. Please do. Well, I told her when she came up before, when she walked in, and she told me she was going to present. I was like, you know, you could just walk down the street. Don't wait. <laughs> <laughs> this is how the West was won. You got yeah. to come. But no, it's good to well, you home. know, the whole thing is, if <clears throat> we don't do it now, how much worse is it going to be next year? Well, and with the vermin running in and out of that house constantly. That's why we need to hear about these situations, not just from you, but other people in the city who are having the same issues. And Scott knows that. There are lots of, there are lots of places <coughs> down in South Cape that are the same way. And we've, There's lots of places everywhere. There are places all over town that way. Oh, I know. But my question is, why aren't the ordinances enforced? 
Chief, do you, do you have a contact information or do you need it? No, I need that. Okay, if you could give him your, your contact information, that way he can be sure to get back to you tomorrow. And okay. bring you up to date on all the, all the issues to exactly where we are, exactly what the next steps are. And the, to answer your question, the broad stroke is, is that the, the truth of it is that it shouldn't have come to this. No. It should. And and that's where the chief will get to the bottom of it, find out, and I know that he will make sure that they tweak to make sure well, that this doesn't happen. And I'm done with things. it now. I'm not working anymore. So y'all are going to put up with me complaining, okay? All right. hey, I'll call Robert. <laughs> I, make I, sure I, he. Yeah. He, oh yeah. Robert loves it when his mother embarrasses him. <laughs> <laughs> but I do it well. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. Anybody else? Uh, good evening, John. Um, what I want to bring up is um, if there's something that can be done. I know we did the, when I say we, the city did the project with the lighting on Spray Street, but right in the 500 block Middle Street, that's like one of the darkest streets in that area over there. There's a lot of drug activity going on. I know that because I'm over every day because I have brothers immediate relatives that live in the block, but from... You said 500 blocks, yeah? Yeah, like from, what is that, Jefferson Street, or Copperfield is, Jefferson Street, back up to the little college street area, it's pitch dark. And so what you see a lot of is there's people that were literally, we're sitting on the porch, there's people that would literally pull up, make these drug deals, and they drive off. Well, one of the things that's happening is, uh, some of my relatives are starting to address it more directly. And I'm afraid like it's gonna turn into something that he doesn't have to come to. But like I know at 522 Middle Street, South Middle Street, there's a, a light there, but there's no bulb there. I mean the street is literally dark and there there's a lot of crime. I mean a lot of uh, drug sales that go on, there's a lot of there's a, there's a pole and light over there, that's an easy thing. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's, it's been dark for a long time. Especially those new light bulbs. Absolutely. And, and what's happening now, for whatever reason, a lot of the crime and the stuff that's happening now, um, it's, come, it's not coming from just one source. It's coming from people that don't even live in neighborhoods and communities and things like that. And so, for whatever reason, some people don't speak up, but I still have family members and kids that I almost ran over a little girl this morning down there because her mom just moved in the neighborhood. She's in the house sleep and I'm backing up into a parking spot. The little girl ran behind my truck, the other little girl screamed. I thought I had killed the little girl. I wonder why they wasn't in school. So one of the properties down there that one of the landlords had, we were gonna put this project there that would change the area within a four block radius overnight, just with the Missouri Recovery Support Services that we do. Well, ironically, the house across the street sold for like eight grand when they bought it. He wanted to sell us this house for like 65 grand. I was like, man, are you serious? These are the type of issues that when we try to do our part to help and to help out even with issues that uh, even a councilwoman may not be aware of or know about, just trying to work together. These are the issues that we face. And I know like on Middle Street right now, it's just pitch dark. And if they if, if they just put a light there, like in the middle of the block, I think it would change a lot of what's going on over there because it goes on on a regular basis because we all know like whether the chief and the officers doing their job, a lot of people are gonna say, you're not doing your job, you're not doing your job. But when they ask them questions, they're not gonna tell them anything. So it has to start somewhere and I think just a simple thing in that area like a, a, a new light pole there or something on those LED lights I think it'll, it'll, it'll change a lot of what's going on there. All right thank you very much. Scott you know what I do whenever I see a, a light bulb that's out I actually just take a picture of it with my phone because you can call Ameren and there's numbers on there and just tell them hey the light's out at four five six you know something so, so, so. and then they'll send the crew out and change the light bulb. Well they've actually done that and uh, what they told them is like, it'll be an extra charge to the person that's living in the house or something like that. Should be. Um, I don't know. If that, if they, if that uh, private residence made a request for that light to be on there, it is added on to their 
fill. And yeah. Then mm -hmm. If that yeah. person then leaves and the new inhabitant doesn't want it, then yeah. Yeah. That yeah. Makes it doesn't all like the, the they, they But uh, also, I'm pretty sure everybody knows and reminded that you know, we have this anonymous text line. If there's drug deals going on. Take a picture, text it, police immediately. It's yeah. anonymous. And you, although that works. A lot of them just yeah. mindset and the way they get it. They they go out and they 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 address it like yeah. literally. I, I I'm just trying to. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah. Yeah. Help. You don't help. You don't want any conflict no. occurring. So yeah, I'd yeah. rather see that situation yeah. happen. Yeah, and I think that if, if if that area just gets that light gets gets lit yeah, up right there, block the lights yeah. and see if there's anything yeah, that needs to be turned off. Let's get that done. But sir, some of those lights that Amron. And there are many of them that the city owns, so it's, it okay. depends on what the situation is. Okay. But I just wanted to bring that to you all. All right, thank you. Right. Thanks. Appreciate it. Anybody else? Your smile. Oh, oh no. <laughs> I <hate> y'all smile. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Ramona. <laughs> if not, we will move into the agenda review. Okay. We have uh, one public hearing tonight. We have uh, the rezoning of 623 North Main Street. This is the uh, Reynolds House across from the uh, uh, casino. And uh, so we'll have that public hearing. And then we will have item number 19 is that, uh, that first reading of that um, public uh, that rezoning to, to CBD. Items uh, three and four of the consent agenda are the second, third readings of those record plats. Uh, number five will be the a, a demolition contract uh, for a couple of properties on North Water and North Henderson. Um, moving forward with the uh, demolition of those. Uh, number six is the uh, license and identity agreement for the uh, public schools at, at Clifford. Put some boulders out uh, on the right away. That's protection for the uh, <coughs> playground, I guess. Um, number seven is the uh, health insurance, employee health insurance you heard about earlier. Uh, eight is the dental plan. Uh, and then number nine is the licensing agreement with the Tracy's. Uh, Ryan and Deb, uh, they have some, uh, we have some real wide right away, and we're you know, wide, and we're gonna just work on West End. While we were doing that, we found out they had some, some fence and some different items on the right of way. This just allows them to leave it there and, and um, don't need an LI in order to do that. Uh, we did a really recent release of lien of the affordable housing grant program on 306 South Benton. That's a good, good news. They've uh, paid off that loan. Uh, number 11 is license and agreement for D Boulder Enterprises at 120 Broadway uh, for uh, awning. Number 12 is a license agreement for a mm -hmm. uh, monument signing uh, going into the new subdivision at Highlands at Hopper Crossing. Uh, number 13 is the time extension for the 